All right, and welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A170, as we've been doing in the previous segments of this series. Uh, but this time, we're going to be looking at a very specific example from the manual uh, where you can adjust the settings for the slew limiter and your patch to have it act as an attack release type envelope. Um, in the previous examples, we've looked at a lot of different things with the A170. The last one, uh, specifically, we're looking at it um, in the Glissando AM example from the manual. So if you missed that or if you're interested in that, uh, you might want to jump back one video and then check that out. Uh, the one previous to that, we were doing Portamento or Glide, as it's also called. Um, and then also looking at the dual slew limiter as a filter. So a lot of different things that this uh, this module can actually do. Uh, prior to that, we kind of started the series by looking at just kind of basic processing within the module, how it affects signals going in, what they look like on an oscilloscope, and uh, just kind of getting acquainted with it, so to speak. Um, but as I said, this is going to be the last segment of the series. Uh, should be a good little wrap up here. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump right in and start looking at our AR example. Now there are some uh, things that I'm going to need to patch here, and we are going to be actually using some of the same elements that we were in the last video, uh, such as our A155, picture it over here on the left. Um, and then we are also going to be using just one VCO. Uh, you may notice if you watched the last one that I changed up some stuff here. Uh, one of our VCOs is missing now. Uh, but for this example, we're not actually going to need it. Um, but what we are going to need is some CV pitch, uh, which we actually used in the last example. Now, down here at the bottom, that's where my pitch is coming from. And I just kind of have it running to this mult over here. Uh, so this is basically a copy of my pitch. Uh, that's going to be going up into my VCO right here. So let me just patch that to get it out of the way. And uh, then my VCO is actually going to be running uh, right into a VCF. So that's the second part of this. So let me get that patched. I'm just going to take a triangle wave and then go right into my low pass filter right here. So right into the input. There we are. And then we are going to need one thing here and that is a gate. Uh, we're going to actually need to malt it. Uh, I didn't actually have room to do that. Uh, so we're going to be using this uh, special cable that you may have seen in some of the other episodes, this uh, stack cable. It's got a little port on the back of it that allows it to uh, duplicate a signal that's plugged in. So I'm going to patch it down here into where our gate is coming out, which is right there. So there we go. So that's patched in. And uh, this gate right here is actually going to go into the slew limiter right up in the top. There we go. And you can see the slew limiter LED on top activating. Um, I'm going to take a copy of that. And so I'm going to patch right into the back of the stack cable. There we go. And I'm going to patch it into the bottom one as well. So now what we see over there on the slew limiter is both of them are firing at the same time. This is actually part of our patch, how we're going to make the slew limiter act as a um, as an attack release envelope. Let me get my settings to where they're equal here, just where we have no slew time going on. Um, so as much as possible, we can start from the bottom. Um, now I do have my VCO patched into my low pass filter. The second part of that is the VCF is going to be going right out and then over into our VCA. Let's see where's the input right there. Make sure it's all the way in. Okay. Now, um, the two gates, as I was mentioning earlier, are going to be going to two different places. One of them is going to be going into the, um, or I'm sorry, not the gates, but the, the outputs from the slew limiter. I'm sorry. Uh, one of them is going to be going out and then it's going to be going into our low pass filter. So just right there. And then the other one from the bottom is going to be going over to our VCA. There we go. And then we're patching into our VCA. So right here, should hear a little sound. Let's, let's see. Okay. And that is our little sequence right there. Now, 
there was one little part of this that I did actually want to change, so let me unpatch my pitch temporarily. I did actually want to take it over to the quantizer first. And this is just my little add-on here. You don't have to do this. If I'm going into my quantizer down here to get it to adhere to a scale. And incidentally, I also have the quantizer, if you're interested, uh, set to chord mode. So I'm patching out from my CV output right into my VCO. Okay, and so there, for the most part, is the basic patch. Now, let's kind of get it to start acting like in a talk release type envelope. Um, and in the manual, it actually says that we're shooting for some kind of uh, percussive effect, although it's not any more specific than that in the manual. Um, so let's see if we can achieve that. And I do have a little bit of resonance I added on there just to kind of accentuate this a little bit. So here we go. Now this one actually acts as the as the attack time. So you can tell it's taking a little while to to start right there. It's kind of a little bit of a delayed onset. But if I bring it down, it has kind of a more straight and very instantaneous type sound. Now the one on the bottom is going to actually act as our release time. So if I bring this up, you should be able to hear that it's just resonating a little bit longer. It's kind of ringing out. The notes are a little longer, kind of flowing together. And there, there's almost no uh, division between the two anymore. Let me bring it down a little bit so we can get back to that kind of straight sound. See, very choppy. Staccato, if you'd like. So now let's just kind of shape it a little bit more. So let's bring up the attack a little bit. And then bring up the release a little bit. And it's a nice sound overall. I kind of like it. It's almost kind of fluty. I think that's probably because I'm using a uh, triangle wave. But a nice little clucky kind of sound. And so that is the basic sound. So at this point, you know, you can go in and you can adjust your frequency cutoff settings if you want a little bit of a different flavor. Or like I did, you know, go in and add a little less resonance. Kind of like that. So you find something that you like. And right there for me, it's anyway, it's uh, kind of resonating a little bit too much. You just kind of find your own little happy balance there. And so that is the Do for A170 slew limiter as an attack release type envelope. So I hope that you found this useful, um, this specific segment, as well as all the previous segments that we've done. Uh, I know we kind of covered quite a bit of ground if you look at the series as a whole. Uh, but hopefully one or two of the videos was useful to you, and hopefully if it weren't uh, necessarily useful to you, maybe there was someone else out there that found some of the other examples somewhat useful. Uh, like for example, going through most of these patch things um, is useful to me, uh, but I personally enjoy doing the oscilloscope stuff more, uh, just because I like the way uh, you, know, you can get to see waveforms and you get to see them shaping and that kind of thing. But this is fun nonetheless. Um, at any rate, I want to thank you for watching the series if you were with us the whole time or if you just joined us for this one specific episode because you had that burning desire to see the A170 as an AR. Um, there you go. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the next series of videos is going to have in store for us, uh, but please stay tuned for that, whatever, uh, whatever it is. We'll try and keep it as interesting as possible. Um, I do want to thank you one more time if I haven't already. Uh, for watching and for keeping 
keeping on, keeping on, so to speak. Uh, so thanks again. Uh, keep on patching out there, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>